Oh, yes. We can never forget Snow Cave. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's just some dude that got lost from his double wide and he was yeah. looking for a 12 pack of, you know, paps. There are a lot of skunk apes on, on like, Tinder. <laughs> find, find some, I will read them and we'll be like, this is three out of five hollows. <laughs> the descriptions were really bad. Bigfoot had a small wiener. Rim shot. I got a toilet sound. I got porno music. Oh, oh you do? Yeah, oh. Splat, splat, a boing. I have Shakira going. Blah, 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 blah. I would honestly be surprised if you didn't have porno music, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> you have to. Yeah. For, for those special times. If you are looking for a dead serious podcast filled with dry, humorless people, I'm afraid you're in the wrong place. This is Midnight Hollow, and we will dive into some weird, creepy, and downright strange stories with a twist of humor, bad puns, and a whole lot of laughs. So sit tight and enjoy the episode. Right, so since, Nick, you are first on the list, let's talk about Loveland Frog. Why does Loveland sound familiar? Um, I don't know. There's there's not a lot there, it seems. It's in Ohio. Oh, I was thinking of Love Canal. Sorry, go on. Which Love Canal? The one in the falls. Oh, I thought you meant like... Uh, like oh. <laughs> Why did, how did I not think of that? I did, like, wow, I'm just, I'm just not used to it yet. The Love Canal. I was like, the falls? Who are you? Yeah, Lo- Love Canal. It's already on. It's like 27th. No, it's in Loveland, Ohio. Gotcha. Which is kind of like my kink now is like spooky stuff from like really obscure places. Because like everyone knows like the Jersey Devil and like Mothman. So I really am loving like tiny cryptids that like literally a town of 20 people know about and that's it um so the loveland frog was first seen in 1979 um and it was actually reported by a police officer that was patrolling and they saw this huge four foot frog um and they tried to shoot at it and it kind of disappeared into the water and then there was another sighting more recently by teenagers who were playing Pokemon Go. And they were looking for like Pokemon. And then they saw this huge frog, but they said that it was standing upright. And it was like a, like a frog man. Um, and then there were like a couple of like smatterings of sightings. Did they catch it with the Pokeball? Is it try? I don't think you can, right? I don't know. I haven't played Pokemon Go. I haven't played. I've never played Pokemon. I've played like the Harry Potter v- version of it, like on your phone, but <laughs> I haven't played Pokemon Go. <laughs> but like, I think it's called Wizards Unite. It's non sponsored, but. <laughs> <laughs> but if they want to, they should sponsor us because a four foot frog sounds like something that would be at like Hogwarts, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they have giant toads. Yeah, they'd use it in Toad Choir. Yeah. yeah it's, it's very canon. <laughs> it sounds like it should be. So the controversy is kind of like after the original person, the officer saw the frog and people started reporting seeing it or seeing it stand on its hind legs. He, I guess, called and filed because he filed a police report on it. So he filed a report and was kind of like, I think everyone else is like bullshitting essentially because when I saw the frog, it wasn't standing up. It looked like this just big four foot like reptilian creature. It could have just been a a fat iguana without a tail and essentially hinted that everyone else who's seen it was kind of just feeding into the legend without actually seeing it. So everyone else was wrong but him. Yeah. And that he's like, it was probably an iguana. But there have been like a couple of people who have had sightings. And it is kind of in Ohio's like lore along with 
a bunch of like other cryptids that they have like they have oh, what are they called it's a very weird name a, a pukwaji is like part of their lore too and they have the south bay bessie which is like lake erie's version of nessie um so a, like a puck what a puck what it, it seriously sounds like you're wearing your underwear too tight or something yeah i got a puck wedgie <laughs> i'm picking my puck wedgie now it's like a weird little like goblin-y creature from what it sounds like that lives in the river around the water which is weird because it seems like all these cryptids kind of have to do with around a body of water for some reason it's true and isn't mothman ohio too Mm, no virginia virginia yep. virginia, yeah West virginia. so like it seems like ohio just has a little tribe of like unknown cryptids that people are like saying that they're getting sightings and there's always the people who are like i snapped a couple of photos but they're very fuzzy which why like if you have an iphone i don't understand how you're how you can't get like an accurate picture if you're snapping like four or five photos unless it's like running around and i don't see a four foot f frog creature just like running around quickly <laughs> so with technology maybe today, it's got it a is, curse on that <laughs> could yeah. be it, with technology today it just doesn't make any sense like if you're not snapping a picture by you know within the first year of it being a legend there's something going on come on everyone has a phone everyone knows how to use it really quick if you have a phone you can play pokemon go on you should be able to take <laughs> an okay picture of it so it's kind of like the new lore of like ohio and to say that people who are seeing it have were playing pokemon go suggests that there are recent sightings it's not just kind of like you know stopped in the 80s or whatever i feel with like all the technology we have we should have like proof of the Loch Ness monster monster by now well don't you remember it wasn't like a 13 year old girl that was three and a half miles away with a flip phone yeah proof but like shouldn't we be able to scan the lock in some sort of like a, a digital way they have like, I feel like we should have proof of all of these things by now with all, like, the technology that we have. I think they have. They've done the Loch Ness, and there's parts of it they just couldn't. And anytime they dive, it's just too murky for anyone to see. So I know that we talked about this. Remember when we did the three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back cryptos, whatever? Yeah, we did a lot of... We did the Loch Ness, and yeah. there was something about that. They did a whole thing on it and they really couldn't find anything because there's like half the lake they couldn't scan for whatever be too deep or it just wasn't working it was That's too murky body yeah it was like because it like does a whole reflection thing but there's so much sediment there it was very difficult to get through that to find anything below blow blow a certain oh. level so but that's where like a Loch Ness monster would be I don't think that they would be near the surface almost all the time and there's also an exit out of there so it could have left. There's a way to get out. That's how they predict that how it came in. Mm. Eventually came in during when they were still living, got stuck, and that was it. Yeah. You, you got to scoop. <laughs> uh, does this frog do anything else? I mean, has it attacked anyone? Is it? No, it's pretty benign. Like, it doesn't do anything. There's no weird noises. I don't think that it has, like, any super special anything. Like, I don't think it's, like, fast moving. The only thing that um, they can speculate is, like, if a frog can climb a tree, that, like, there might be just, like, this four-foot frog just hanging in the trees, like, watching people. Yeah. <laughs> Just like watching people walk by and it could be like up in the trees. But other than that, it's like, it seems like it's a normal frog. It doesn't seem like it's like a hybrid thing, like a big foot where it could be like half person, even though people have said that they've seen it standing upright. But if you lick it, do you get high? No, but I think it turns into a prince. If you lick it? Yeah. I, I want to know what kind of prince that turns into. Like, oh, uh, Jim, we we don't kink shame. Come on. Okay, that's true. That's true. 
Sure. And the only reason I know that is because Beavis and Butthead did it. They grabbed a frog and put it in their mouth and they're waiting for them to get high. That's the only I reason I know that that it. The worst things when you lick them, so. <laughs> well, I'm not going to worry about doing that, so. Try it. You'll like it. We're not by the equator. It's probably a benign frog and not a poisonous one, so. But like, but imagine, imagine you're just driving and you see like a huge frog. That would scare the shit out of me. I would hit a tree because I'd be trying to take a picture with my phone. Yeah. I'd be like, <laughs> and then you'd end up with four blurry shots and you'd be like, no, I swear. I'm like, what's this picture? That's... Oh, that's just the blood across the windshield from my forehead hitting the steering wheel. <laughs> you'd be like, mm, seems like a myth. I think with your phone, you should be able to get a better shot. <laughs> Same thing with Bigfoot, not to poo poo on Bigfoot, but at this point, come on, really? Unless that's the thing is like, but it could be in like the Alps or like in, don't they say, it, isn't there like a smaller version that's like in a lot of like Asian forests? Well, there's Yeti and they yeah. say Yeti is extremely difficult. So white on snow, it's very difficult to see anyways. They're almost self-camouflaging. Yeah. And I don't remember what the other one was called. There was a skunk ape. Oh yes. We can that's never Florida. forget skunk ape. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's just some dude that got lost from his double wide and he was yeah. looking for a 12 pack of, you know, paps. There are a lot of skunk apes on, on like Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a nationwide epidemic. It's yeah. Very serious stuff. Please get rid of the, please extinct the skunk ape. <laughs> and there's a reason why technology has not reached the whole nose level of. Do you know there was a TV back in the day they tried to develop with. Smell? I never knew that. When? Uh, late seventies, early eighties. It was a. It had like this little contraption, and when something happened on the TV, you would hit it, and it would. You said they would tell you to hit something, and you'd hit it, and out would come a smell. I have no idea how good it was. I don't. But I was always like laughing, like if I'm playing a video game and I'm like Fallout Four going into this area with all these dead ghouls. I'm like, boy, that's got to smell great. Yeah, I don't know that I, I want to. I'm glad we're not that far in technology right now. Like, like free I'm watching. Bag with every video game. I'm binging Rock of Love right now, and I do not want to smell Brett Michaels by any means. <laughs> <laughs> or that house. <laughs> like, smells like stale I think, cheese. I think he smells like, you know, when a man has like a beer burp and they just kind of like blow it. I think that's what oh. he smells like. <laughs> <laughs> that's on brand actually i i second that yeah I, I don't want him to sue me for her like defamation of character but i, I, I can... feel like that's what he's you're not like. saying he definitely smells like that it's just your imagination it's my opinion. maybe he can come prove you wrong yeah. i think you're oddly accurate and that's disturbing mm -hmm. but like maybe mixed with like axe body spray yes it, it, yeah it's I definitely gotta be a cheap one smell. yeah do you remember they used to have what was it like the three pack and they were called like bod oh yeah that's bod terrible. smell and that was like for like 16 year old boys it was like bod i feel like that's like oh shit that's my it. my gender like my my peeps we 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 threw down the money we had polo tracar yeah. like 40 dollar bottles that were like this big and we go to our dances and go out to the mall and just dab a little bit on them because it was so freaking expensive. Yeah. Yeah, we, we were like that. <laughs> okay, anyways. Skunk ape smell on you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Skinwalker Ranch. So, I know, Nikki, you said you watched a couple. Do you, what do you know about Skinwalker Ranch? So, I feel like Skinwalker Ranch they never name exactly what it could be they always lean towards ufos but they also say there's paranormal activity they also say that they find um livestock that's like drained of blood which sounds like it could be or turned inside out or something which sounds like it could be like a chupacabra type. chupacabra yeah a chalupa situation but like it seems like there's just a lot of stories that are could be a variety of things like it could be ghosts it could be like a poltergeist it could be 
radioactivity from like government experimentation it could be the ufos and they keep trying to measure it and figure it out and it seems like in this series they're really leaning into ufos and a government like issue like a government testing site anna what do you remember because i was talking to nikki earlier like what the show is is really quite different than when I originally thought. What do, what do you know or think of Skinwalker? She's thinking really hard. <laughs> Drum roll, please. So I honestly haven't watched it. I, it's popped up for me on Hulu. I watched like I think the first 15 minutes and I just my knee-jerk reaction was just what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> Um, I, I probably should go back and finish an episode, but I think it would really make sense if it was a combination between UFOs and, and government, right? It's probably just in that one weird spot that attracts like whatever extraterrestrial is out there. And then the government probably is just coming in to intervene and we're just unaware of it. I think it's the perfect cocktail of paranormal activity. That's funny you mentioned, cause that's in season two, they're kind of. So anyone watching this, there's going to be slight spoilers with with this. Honestly, it's it's kind of slow. It is, Ooh. but it, you're you're actually very close. Where there, it's there's certain things in there that is is almost a way line to certain things and other events that have happened in the past. So um, I got my notes handy, <laughs> and they're the that. correct ones. I'm not going to be start talking about <laughs> notes from a different, you know, like anyways. Are we sure about that, though? What's that? That they're the correct notes. Are we sure that this... Yeah, I'm pretty sure, because the only other notes on here is send Roslyn an email. Amazon something. So, yeah. <laughs> um, Buy Bigfoot book. Right, so <laughs> with Skin, Skinwalker, I always, you know, I've, I read and I listened to some podcasts in regards to it and there was always seemed to be like these mysterious werewolves and cryptos and and, and poltergeists and all this other stuff yeah the show is like not that sure that you can maybe associate a few things with that but i mean this is like before it was like flat out yeah i saw a dog i shot it it disappeared stuff like that there's nothing like this in the show they don't even really talk about it so i'm like where are people getting this information on skinwalker ranch when these people, I mean, they're right on the ranch and we're, we're watching it for just an exorbitant amount of time. There's nothing like that. And people don't even really talk about that. So I'm like, where are people getting, I guess, kind of goes along with legends and how they morph into something more than they are. So um, so some of the first things uh, they started talking about is uh, one of the ranch helps. They, they developed an issue with their head and that's why they didn't want to... Um, to dig because when they were digging it started to affect people physically uh the one dude like they had a uh, scan of it and there was like this big bulbous thing in his head i'm sure you can i could relate that to something dirty but it won't um and he was like he was out for like three four months and stuff and he still wasn't like fully recovered from it so there's definitely something in regards to the ground in the digging i think that's why they were really scared to dig especially season one um Another thing they were doing, like, there's, and where I understand, like, the UFO thing goes, I'm not quite with the government thing because it's been happening far too long. Like, there's ancient markings and stuff in, the, in these people that have been translating them. It's all throughout any kind of rock formations there. Hmm. They've been translating. They're easily, like, I, I don't know, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old. So it's, like, this stuff, and there's, like, warnings, too. Like, hey, don't come here, or there's things happening here type of stuff, kind of warning stuff. So I'm guessing at, at that point, maybe the government has since, but initially I think it was just kind of what Anna was saying. Like maybe it's a cross line where there's something that's just the perfect storm right there that that's causing this and or which I'll get a little farther into is, is there's something that landed here, something that's sitting underneath this that is causing all this phenomena. Yeah, like a chicken and the egg and the government is just the after effect. And maybe they're the ones that maybe like were throwing more gasoline on the fire and yeah. um yeah and then uh I can't read my writing. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> Neither can we. <laughs> one one odd thing before I get too far into the main one is that there, there's been a house on the property for about 50, 60 years. And um, the ranch people who are actually like taking care of the cows and alpacas. I don't know why alpacas are there, but they're there. Um, they're taking care of them. And they were having like weird sounds and stuff. So they went in at night and they, they caught some of the weird noises. They went down in the basement and part of the foundation was like this big square uh, stone thing that's kind of holding up the, the house. Mm-hmm. Inside, they're tr- they they drilled a little, get inside, and there's like human remains in there. And it looked like it was a a place where people were burned. Like, if you want to dispose of a body, you burn them. Like, that's what, what they came to the conclusion of, that it was like a burn site for... I don't know if necessarily it was all human, but like animal remains and stuff like that. But they did find some human remains behind underneath that. So, uh, what? So the sound was traced to the chimney or to the foundation? Right. Where? Yep, it was just... Wait. Mm-hmm. So human or humanoid? They're pretty sure some of the bones I couldn't tell. But then there was ones that could, they were definitely, they had a, a person identify them. Because they couldn't get in there because they couldn't bring it down because they'd bring the house down. Yeah. So they had to be very careful what they did. So they only got a little bit and they were able to get like reach in and get a few bits. They couldn't really tell. They went out for testing and it came back inconclusive because it burnt because of the, the heat. But they have pictures of a bunch of other ones like, oh, no, that's definitely a spine. That's definitely this. But it could also have been like animal remains in there, too. But they're pretty sure there's human remains in there, too. So how fast did they sell that house? Oh, they're still living there. Oh, why wouldn't they just bold. They have so much land? Why wouldn't they just bury whatever they wanted? They, they can't dig, yeah. remember? You can buy a trailer and move it somewhere else on the property. True. But it's they're the they got hired. Well, it's the rich mogul dude that, that has that place, and uh, he hired them to take care of the animals. So you're kind of screwed. Like, can we move now? You're, you're just sitting there. Okay. Does Skinwalker Ranch have anything to do with Skinwalkers? No. Come I mean, on. not that Why I know. Why would they name it that? Why because it originally, called? originally, like I said, like the legends, like the the wolves, and it would change into something, and they would call them Skinwalkers. Uh, skinwalkers are obviously are, are changelings or thing, uh, creatures that can change into different things. So that's why they named it Skinwalker Ranch. But honestly, I've watched, what, uh, 18 episodes? There's nothing. Yeah. Skinwalkery about it. Skinwalkery. Yeah. <laughs> Skinwalkery. Um, let me see here. Yeah, they got uh, they brought in alpacas. Alpacas. Alpa- Alpacai. Alpacis. You know, they probably brought them in because alpacas and llamas like they spit when they get angry. So if there was like something out there instead of um that was like supernatural, instead of like having an animal that could defend itself, it's like hakalugi. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it could be. I mean, they didn't really get too far into it, and then of course that episode they got attacked, and they had oh, cameras please. all over the place, and it just showed one of the alpacas just kind of like looks like it was trying to fend for its life or something, but there's nothing there. It was like weird and definitely got injured. So, I mean, I guess that's where the whole Skinwalker thing. I guess I shouldn't say nothing was, but you don't see anything. You just see it like getting attacked. Do they have dogs on the ranch? Not that I know of. That's see. If I was on that property, I would have a, some big old dogs with me, because that's like the first line of defense to like sense anything is to see like how, like a dog would react or a cat would react. You know what I mean? And why don't really they have a any? Dog? It's a ranch. Any animal. Any yeah. ranch ha- usually has some dogs on it. Or There's... bare minimum a barn cat. Yeah, or bare minimum. <laughs> There's no, I there's no dogs there. I'm positive. I would remember that. Hmm. I, I guess there's a reason. Maybe because they got killed. I don't know. Yeah, they need to bring a dog on and see what happens. I want to. Maybe the owner's allergic. Could be. I mean, they have hyperallergenic ones, like a poodle. <laughs> bring in a the fighting poodle. poodle. Could you imagine like a poodle hurting alpacas? <laughs> Sure, I would not? pay good money to see that. <laughs> uh oh, we got ten minutes left. Uh, so, 
who we're going to try Nikki's link after this then. Okay. All right. So next up is the, um, the, a cow died. Oh no. And after a lot of investigation, it died of fright that caused like this instant pneumonia. The, the chemicals and everything and like when you something happens to you personally and something you have this like weird mix in your body like when you have a panic attack or whatever same yeah. thing with the cow and then just died almost instantly that's weird that it would be pneumonia and not like a heart issue well i mean that kind of tied into it but the main reason like it definitely the heart but it was because it was pretty much scared to death and it mm-hmm. was an onset of pneumonia which stopped a lot of its organs hamsters do that all the time like, if you sneeze, it can, like, scare her hamster so much that it just, like, its heart, like, gives out and it dies. Really? Mm-hmm. I don't have a hamster. Oh, that's terrifying. Mm-hmm. I know. Um, so they shot some rockets up in the sky. They did this twice. <laughs> to scare the cows so they die. <laughs> probably. But that was probably the most interest. one of the most inter- interesting things. They shot the rockets in the sky, and then it wasn't, like, two minutes later... There was UFO that they got clear as day out there. Some silver ball looking thing that was floating around out there. And then it disappeared. They shoot another rocket. It appeared again. So that was pretty darn interesting. I was That's at least I'll give them that. Um, I mean, they have to be like hovering pretty close to the ranch at all times to be able to see it at like such a random moment. And some of these rockets were just like, I would build and go out there and shoot them off but the second time around they had like professional ones that went like five thousand feet in the air like crazy um that actually didn't do as much as the other ones did uh but it was almost like within a minute it would just pink pop up somewhere and start roaming around and then would disappear really weird um there was also a time when they uh kind of in the middle of an episode and they they went into their little headquarters where they have the huge screen and all that and they go watch this and there's this little black thing that's like moving around and then it like zooms and, and leaves and they're going, well, that could have been a bug. He goes, no. And they went to another camera and you see it going in between clouds, disappear into clouds. And then it, it's like an awesome thing. That was the only time in the whole thing where I'd like, I actually leaned forward going, holy crap, what the hell is that? And they kept showing it and I don't know what the hell it was. So there's some kind of connection to whatever is underground. When you, you disturb something above it, it, it does it. Cause it was when they were doing this uh, electrical thing. And it was, the electric was going into the sky. That's what that actually happened. So, um, let's see, there was an underground bunker, uh, huge underground bunker. They think in part of a cavern system. So they they poured in tons and tons of uh, water, and it it filled up. And then within five minutes, it was just gone, like into the into the ground by a creek. Uh, the creek was dry, and they they put water in there, and then it just disappeared and it was gone. They have no idea where it went to. So they, they did an experiment, put like green dye in there to see if they can find it in other kind of places throughout the thing. They couldn't find it. They have no idea where the water goes. And they, it, they didn't put it. just like a, a pitcher of water. They pumped, <laughs> pumped, pumped <laughs> tons of water in there, like hundreds, if not a thousand gallons of water just to see what happens. Enema of water. It just disappears. So there's definitely something underneath that's part of this whole thing um oh uh so one of the other things that were actually pretty darn interesting is they, they brought in this this um this uh guy from the um jewish religion and he was doing a chant some kind of chant for i don't know to to reach the other side or reach another dimension i don't know i'm like i didn't know the, the, you didn't go to Hebrew school. Continue. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know they they did that. So cool. They they thumbs up on that. You know, hey, keep an open mind. So he did that, and they had for whatever reason they decided to do thermal cameras. Mm. So they, they're scanning with the thermal, and then all of a sudden there's this one little area that went from like it was pretty warm out there, like 75 degrees, 80 degrees, and it dropped to like 50, and it was like the square, perfect square. So they walked in there, and it was just like they walked into a meat locker and people started feeling sick and everything. And they had to get out of there. I danced under in college. (laughs) 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 
So, I mean, that was at least interesting. Um, a square. Pretty much a square. Like, it, was, it wasn't It was like, you know, how, like, it would be all warm and kind of cold or colder. It was just, like, warm and then cold. It was, like, cut off. Like, it was just this, like, it was a straight up, like, a wall. And nothing happened when they were, like, touching or, like, in it? Yeah, they get sick. They were getting sick. They were freezing, and a couple people were getting dizzy, and they had to leave. So oh. they did it again the following day, and the same thing happened. Because they recorded the dude, and then they just put it on a speaker, the same chant. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the dude kept saying, okay, well, I can do this, but you're also, you know, poking the bear. You're opening a door. You're to another dimension. Because that's one of the things they think. They think it's a door to another dimension. Which I don't even like the Star Trek episodes with that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> um. Maybe yeah, but, not another dimension, maybe like a portal somewhere else right. in the universe, I think would be more plausible than a dimension. True. But then again, Doctor Strange 2 hasn't come out yet, so what the hell do I know, right? Well, <laughs> um, I mean, there's a couple other things I could talk about, but the uh, last really cool thing was they decided to go as high as they could with a helicopter because there, there's something that's really above there that's creating a lot of this uh, energy spikes and stuff, so they decided they're just going to go as high as they can go. And so they got up to a certain level, like 3,000, 4,000 feet, and they started getting this warning, like he was going to hit the ground. So he's way up in the air, and the warning, the helicopter was saying, whoa, 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 you're too close to the ground, instantaneous. So they found that there was something that was like, I think, 40 or 50 feet below them that was like sticking with them. If they went real fast, then it would kind of disappear, and then they'd slow down, and then all of a sudden it would come back on again. So something was trailing them underneath, causing this the the thing to like obviously it's like a radar thing mm. to hit something and come back up immediately making the helicopter think that you're too close to the ground because at that height it shuts off all automa- automatically because you just don't need it because you're that yeah. high in the air but it kicked on and all of a sudden started going off because of that so and you couldn't see it with their like eyes they couldn't see anything not a thing they had cameras all over the place they had cameras in the thing and it, they're just like okay we got to we're getting down because the one, the dude was flipping out. He's just like, listen, I didn't really sign up for this. So can we just land this thing? Yeah. <laughs> so they had to land it, but I thought I was like, damn, what the hell could that be? So there are some, some pretty good episodes. And then there's some clunkers. Let me tell you, they're just like, all right, repeat yourself again, please. Yeah. So have they had like a shaman or like any sort of like native American, mm-hmm council come yep and that's where some of the because they found all these hieroglyphics and they brought him out and he he was a shaman and he also worked for university to to like be someone who deciphered that kind of stuff and Hmm. uh and he pretty much dictated there's a couple he couldn't figure out and then he's like yeah this is kind of a warning there's things that happen here and he's like i don't know what these are and the one guy goes i think those are constellations and they look and they were they matched up perfectly to a bunch of constellations i don't know what it would be four, but that's what it was. They linked up the constellation. So who knows what the hell's happening on that place? But it's nothing like the legend. It's definitely UFO more. Like the last thing I think I really wanted to talk about was that this is definitely a place where there was a meteor storm that hit a long, long, long time ago. Mm-hmm. So it could be parts of that that, you know, they they feel like there's large parts of a meteor that's somewhere underneath and they think that's maybe where everything is kind of generating from beginning from and then like and uh, nikki you were saying like people have been poking it like poking the bear yeah they were poking (laughs) um and and it's just you know it irritates them or whatever and it does things i don't know you know i did that can go through tons of x-file episodes that probably relate to that so yeah, because if you said that, like, oh, if you dig, people are getting sick, you would think that it would be some sort of, like, like a chemical reaction more than, like, a supernatural one. Or if, like, there was sure. gas or something. If you don't want to swallow, you might as well. It. Midnight Hollow. Oh, no John. sense. No, that that's actually our tagline. It's I know, I know it day. is. I was there when you did it. I we need to chill. I think. <laughs> I like Lisa's though. Hers was polite. What was hers? Okay. Hers bye. was if you don't want to swallow. I mean, it's your choice if you want to or not. 
<laughs> but you might as well Midnight Hollow. <laughs> so, yeah, I know it's a little much. But hey, you know, it could be. I'm just drinking. I'm going to swallow my drink. There you go. It, you're swallowing the information that we're bringing to you. Yeah. Dirty <laughs> fucking <laughs> mind. That's not what we meant. <laughs> as long as it's consensual, that's all that matters. <laughs> the yes. swallow is consensual. Yeah. Can a swallow be consent? Uh, never mind. All right. <laughs> Most of them are. Uh, yes. <laughs> anyway, it, it can go into uh, good discussion, but I'm not going to. Mm. All right. So, Anna, Anna we, we have a special today. Um, I don't know. Are you going to do a little bit of a reading or are you just going to talk about it, Nikki? Oh, I want to order the full book and read it to you. <laughs> <laughs> and then so i want to do <laughs> you, you might want to tell tell them what we're talking about i want to do a, like a little reading corner where we take like a supernatural type of book and like mostly it'll be purposely like bad and read a supernatural book and then we give it like a rating and we'll do a snippet and we'll talk about like the the juiciest bits, but also like the worst bits. And like I want to start with that Bigfoot porn one that we did like a long time ago. Leonard. <laughs> with Leonard. Um, that one is famously titled Come for Bigfoot. <laughs> I forgot about Leonard. How could you? I don't know. I don't I've remember anything, and I remembered Leonard. I'm like, Nikki was talking, I'm like, wait, isn't that Leonard? She's like, yes, it was Leonard. It was Leonard. And I only remember because of Leonard that we work with. And I was like, oh. He's not very hairy, though. <laughs> no, I don't think he has big feet either. I, I'm not going there. Well, th apparently... we can't say anything because yeah. wasn't Le didn't Leonard have a little wink? In the book, I don't know that you're asking me personally. Oh. About... <laughs> Real personally, life do you know? I was like, I don't know. Have you heard that? But Leonard in the book, the Bigfoot hybrid Bigfoot dead. But apparently there's like, this is a big thing is like genre of Bigfoot porn, which is like an even big collective of like a weird, like cryptid, supernatural, literatica, like book series. Like Come for Bigfoot has in each book, I think five volumes and there's three books. Did wait, you called it Literotica. Yeah. I like that name. Literotica. <laughs> Literotica. Oh, <laughs> there's like a whole series of like blue aliens called the Ice Planet Barbarians. And there's twenty two books. I read them all. all so of maybe them? I'll bring that one. Yes. Oh, I read all of them during quarantine. <laughs> and it's got the next one. Yeah, in high school I read a series and it was called the I want to say M Meredith or Mary like Gentry series and it was like she was a fae queen and there's like elves, there's goblins, there's fairies and I got it because my friend was reading it. She read like the whole series and she's like, well, you like, like supernatural stuff like Harry Potter and like Lord of the Rings. So like, give it a try. It's just like a little bit spicier version. And it is very spicy, <laughs> but it's also like. Is it ghost pepper spicy? It's yeah, it's very graphic, but it's also Wait. weird. Because, like, if someone was like, what are you reading? You can't tell them because it's like. <laughs> you just have to be like, fantasy. And then they're like, specifically, what book? And then you go, I can't tell you. I'm yeah. like, it, it's just a book. It's fine. Because if you're like, oh, like sci-fi, it's the Laurel K. Hamilton is the author. And my favorite thing is like the book titles are like A Kiss of Shadows. A caress of twilight, seduced by moonlight, a stroke of midnight. Like they're all very <laughs> like funny. They're not bad though. 
Yeah. But like they sound like actual books. Right. It sounds like you would just pick up a romance novel, but then you're like, oh, she's a uh, fae queen that's half human. So they like discriminate against her because she's like partly human and not all fae. And then it's just kind of like in order for her, I guess the fae are like very kinky because in order for her to like eventually become an heir to the throne, she's got to like fuck everything and there's like a bunch of <laughs> random like species <clears throat> like it just sounds like an anime show it's so weird i have them on audible because like i'm not gonna sit down and read them but if i'm going for a walk okay they're on audible yeah they're on audible Damn. oh audible's crazy sponsor me um <laughs> <laughs> We're getting sponsors for the show. So far, we have what? I'm sure Audible. they're going to be like, oh, yeah, Audible will be like, hey, we got a sponsor of the show talking about <laughs> Bigfoot porn and in in phase fucking everything. So they can I come. I bet you Audible will have the Bigfoot porn if I wanted to listen to it. I don't know if they still have it, but Audible had their own like romantic like section yeah. that was like an additional subscription to the Audible platform. Really? Really? But you could like check out the books, I think. I don't remember what it was called. I've I don't know had, if it's still there. I've had a couple that were like spicy ones that I have downloaded. I don't think it made me sign into something else, but maybe it's because my Audible account has like my birthday in it. But I think Audible will be a good way for me to kind of find like these supernatural books. And if they're, like, pretty cheap, I'll grab them and I'll read them and we'll do, like, a little book review of <laughs> I have Kindle Unlimited and I've read a ton. So if you need me to, like, pull yeah, one out Yeah, I have a Kindle. Goodreads. Send me some. We'll find, we'll find <laughs> some. I will read them and we'll be like, this is three out of five hollows. <laughs> the descriptions were really bad. Bigfoot had a small wiener. But it was very fun to hear the audible reader try to make the sounds that were written in the book <laughs> and we'll see if it's like worth it or not if you're into like supernatural we could probably expand it to like not being funny and do like actual books on like cryptids or whatever and they're good and do like a little book review corner but like i figured we'd start with um the big funny one. one yeah but imagine you're like okay i just got out of college I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get into acting maybe voice acting someone goes like, hey will you read a book yeah sure sure i need the money you know i could barely make rent and he was i have to read this yes uh yeah. that good? no we need a little bit more give it a little more flavor eh? like, i'm just while you're saying i'm going oh my god how would you even like no no louder do that if you were like half of a monkey, though. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wouldn't even want to know how they kind of would transpire. Like, oh crap, I probably should have read this before I took the job. Yeah. Mm. That's like the ones where people, I, <laughs> the low income ones are the ones that people have already rejected reading like five times and you really need the money. So you're like, I'll do those. <laughs> and then you I never would use love a real to name. do that for extra money to just like record an audio book but well, I, I absolutely would do that voice so i don't know <laughs> i would just give them a fake name so nobody knew it was me right. unless you actually were friends with me right. yeah it's my but, side hustle so really now we know if there are any books that anyone wants <laughs> to like look into but not buy it out of shame <laughs> Oh, that's they a, can let us know. It's also and another consideration. A, yeah. And I'll give it a read. I don't think my girlfriend's going to think twice if, like, Come for Bigfoot volumes one through three show up at my house. <laughs> yeah, we, we have to, like, <laughs> would you think she would be surprised? And you were like, no, she wouldn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, would you, would you question it? And she's like, no. And I was like, what if I told you it was, like, for podcast? She'd be like, I mean, it's like a 50 50 <laughs> 
Trick, you don't you don't have to lie to me, hon. I get it. You're cool. And... Yeah. <laughs> no, really, it honestly is. Do you want me to put the monkey suit on? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have uh, I have a Pharaoh's hat and a uh, a, a, a dragon hat too. I use for my there is... uh, my new New Year's Eve stream. Why? What were you doing? I don't know. I they were You're on sale. All after. Yeah, I'll, I'll put on one of them. Oh, here we go. That's the thing is when we review, maybe we should do. <laughs> oh, I mean, there's definitely like dragon smut out there. So maybe we can just have Jim wear the hat. I would oh. love How does a dragon, which is so large, do anything is what I would like to know. <laughs> they shrink this... down to like a human. That's oh, it. Oh. This... They're like changelings. Is this considered cultural appropriation or? I think it might be. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but they really did a bang up job with a snake the on the snake. <laughs> oh my god, Jim, we're gonna get canceled. We That's didn't even not... start yet, and we're getting canceled. <laughs> He's happy to see us. It's not a real snake. <laughs> <laughs> no, if we're happy to see us, it would be like that. <laughs> and a little oh, no. tongue. <laughs> it's oh. a spin cobra. <laughs> There we go. Unbelievable. I would I do the dragon mummy. one, but it literally like sits a foot and a half off my head. So I I'd be like mummy erotica. But you here. said but you said dragon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and and dragon. I'm just very disappointed. Why right. did you need to wear these for your streams? Aw. Mog. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I got it for my uh, New Year's Eve stream. My nephew had uh, a dog one. I think it was supposed to be Snoopy, but it looked nothing like Snoopy. <laughs> he wore one, and then someone, uh, my friend Todd was supposed to, but he didn't. So, Just for a stream on uh, New Year's Eve, because no one was going anywhere, so we just decided to all stream together. We're That's fun. Very festive. I'm crooked. It leans to the left a little. The angle of the dangle is equally yeah. proportional to the beat of the meat, so that would be to the left, yes. I had to think about it for a second, like, yeah, that would be to the left. Yeah. Information no one wanted to know. <laughs> no. All right, so Bigfoot porn. Before my computer dies. What's that? I said I have seven minutes before my computer dies. Well, we can wrap up the Bigfoot porn. So I didn't read the Bigfoot porn yet. But I want to buy it. We found an article and it's uh, the a comprehensive, an incomplete but definitely exhaustive review of Bigfoot erotica. It's by BuzzFeed. Um, and it essentially reviews a bunch of books of Bigfoot porn, like Bigfoot Did Me From Behind and I Liked It by Raven Blackbird. That was the name of the book? That was it. Well, and they I guess give you know it like a getting. rating. Yeah, Bigfoot Depravity by Robin North. Uh, Bigfoot's Gay by Candy Banger. We love an ally. Queer icon Bigfoot. I, I don't. I don't believe that because if Bigfoot's gay, he's never going to reproduce. Maybe he's bisexual. Maybe. Oh, okay. Well, you know. Dropped. Or. Yeah, he could be Pan. You don't know. Maybe they have surrogate Bigfoot babies. Or maybe the female is dominant and just forces him to grr. Right. right? Not have sex, but grr. Yeah, there's Come for Bigfoot is on here, too. It's by Virginia Wade, if anyone else is going to read along with me. <laughs> <laughs> the premise is attractive teenagers, Porsche, Shelly, Leslie, Chris, Cameron, and Darren are on a wilderness excursion with Chris's hot dad, Mr. Vandekempt, when the group stumbles upon a strange footprint in the woods. Porsche, or is it Portia? I don't know. Portia. It's got the e. Portia, Portia, the narrator, Shelley and Leslie are subsequently kidnapped and kept as sexually satisfied prisoners of a roving band of Bigfoots, and all the human men are killed. Also something of a reoccurring theme with Bigfoot porn. Um, notable penis descriptions. That should probably be in our thing, too. 
A huge pale cock that defied logic. So Wait, I guess it's not little. Wh- why did we think it was... One of the stories had he had a little wank. He just yeah. his little flopper was super small. One of the memorable quotes is I laid snuggle next to Bigfoot whose name was Leonard. So it's gotta be that one. What do we learn about Bigfoot? One of them, the main one, is named Leonard. There's another one called Dale. They gave it a horny Bigfoot rating of 3.5 out of five. <laughs> it's not just a rating. Yeah. It is a horny Bigfoot horny. rating. So that's what I'm going to try and read by our next podcast. That is awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what is this world that this exists? Like, at what point is this in our in our universe that Bigfoot porn exists and there's horny Bigfoot ratings out there for people to, to look at and say, hey, that has a high horny rate rating. I'm I'm reading that one, and I'm not reading the other one because he only has a small wank. This one has what did he call a pal? A it giant says, pal flopper. What is it? A flopper. A flopper. A huge pale cock that defied oh. logic. Oh, defied logic. I guess it was a podcast, wasn't it? With Nikki, Anna. And me, where we talked about Bigfoot porn, Skinwalker Ranch, and giant frogs that you can't get high off if you lick them. So I guess I'm the one who has to sign off on this one in our tagline. Our wonderful tagline. If you don't want to swallow, you might as well Midnight Hollow. Sure. What the hell? Why not? And everyone can stare at my big zit.